Hey everybody, welcome to Franny's Square. Today we're going to be learning how to do the waffle stitch. Okay, so I received an email from Vanessa, one of our subscribers, asking if I would please do a tutorial on the waffle stitch. So I figured I would just get that done right away in case she has something she wants to make with it. I love the waffle stitch, particularly if you make it using a cotton. It makes a great washcloth, hand towel, dish towel. It really gives a farmhouse country look to me. Plus, I think the waffle stitch is more absorbent because of the way the stitch is constructed. It's a very simple stitch. It uses only the chain and the double crochet. And the double crochet we do in a regular format and also as a front post double crochet. As you know, I believe once you understand what you're doing and why you're doing it, the pattern becomes secondary. And that's so true for the waffle stitch. So you'll see when we sit down to do the waffle stitch, I'll explain to you why you're doing each stitch and I think it will make perfect sense to you and it'll be one of your favorite stitches. Okay, so let's talk about the waffle stitch. You know me, I feel like if you understand what you're doing, you're gonna have no problem doing it. You're not even gonna need a pattern. So with the waffle stitch, what is it? Basically, it's a stitch that protrudes and then two that zip back and a stitch that protrudes and two that zip back. And that's the pattern. And the one that's protruding in this row also protrudes in this row. It makes a nice little grid, okay? So it's basically a three stitch repeat. And you will hear that it's also a two row repeat. So you'll put your base row of whatever stitches. We'll do double crochets. Then the next row, you'll do one pattern. And on the row back, you'll do another pattern. But in all reality, once you have your first row done, you don't have to remember anything. Your fabric is going to tell you exactly what to do. That's the beauty of this. And that's the beauty of understanding what you're doing. So the only stitches you're going to need to know for this are the chain stitch and the double crochet. And we will do a regular double crochet and a front post double crochet. A front post double crochet is what causes these to stick out. And I will explain that as we go. So we're going to start with a chain of 24. You're going to do a chain of any multiple of three. It is a three stitch repeat here. And I like to do a multiple of three. That's also a multiple of four. And why is that? Because I like my pattern to be so that I have this raised side and this side raised, and then the two stitches here. If you start with a different multiple that isn't a multiple of four, you may have you may have one stitch sitting back and then you start your pattern so it just works out this way all right so i did 24 which is divisible by three and four okay and now we're going to go into the fourth stitch from the hook and we're going to make a double crochet okay And all this is going to do, we're going to double crochet all the way down in each chain, is it's going to give me a number of double crochets that is basically a multiple of three plus one double crochets. And again, why do I want that? Because I want, if I'm looking at the three row repeat, right, which is a protruding stitch, then two, a protruding, then two, a protruding, then two. But when I get to the end, if I just had three, I'd have a protruding and then two. I don't like the look of that. I want to have my extra guy there, okay? That's all that's about. And if that didn't make sense to you, don't worry. Just put that aside for later. <laughs> the rest of this will make sense to you. Okay, so continue making a double crochet in each chain along the way. So if you were watching my furls crochet hook haul, you saw that I purchased this hook just recently and now I'm using it for the week. I, last week I used the Tulip Etimo 
hook and my flash review on that will be coming up this week. I jumped right to the furls. I got so excited when, <laughs> when I was testing the Odyssey. I really wanted to see how it works for me. I will use this hook all week. So, of course, except when I'm doing the tutorial for the uh, cardigan, because this is not the right size. I don't have the right size furls hook for the cardigan, so I'll continue. Plus, you really don't want to switch up your hooks in the middle of a project. So I'm gonna stick with my tulip for that project. As it is, I switched from my first hook to my tulip in the middle of the project, which did create a looser stitch for me. Uh, so, you know, it's making a slightly bigger sweater, but I just went with it. <laughs> I figure a cardigan, if it's slightly bigger, you know. If it was too much bigger, I was gonna to have to rip out my work and go back. I'm not a person who is good at just changing my tension to match it up. I would be too inconsistent in case anybody's wondering why I didn't just do that. Okay, so let's count our double crochets here. One, two, I'm counting the chain in the beginning. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, which is a multiple of three plus one. Twenty-one is a multiple of three, and then we add one. So now I can have my edges both raised. Okay, so for the net, now let's look at where we are. We are currently on the front of our fabric. How do I know that? Because my I started with just a chain, not a uh, foundation stitch chain, just a chain for my foundation. And my tail is on the left. Also, I can see both the back and front loops of my stitches from this side of the fabric. When I turn to the other side, which is the wrong side, my tail will be on the right side and I'll only be able to see the back of those stitches because the front's on the other side. Why is this important? Well, we know that we want the waffle stitch on the front of our fabric. We don't want it on the back. So what I'm gonna do now is start the waffle stitch pattern. Oh, let me get to the end of this row. So while I'm here, I'm gonna chain three and turn, and that'll be my first double crochet on the other side. Now, if I look at the back of my fabric, what I see here is I have two protruding stitches and then one that, that doesn't, and two that do, and one that doesn't. That makes sense because it's the opposite of my front. My front, these two that are in the back are actually protruding on the back. So that's all I wanna keep in mind. So let's make our two protruding because we are on the back here, okay? So to make a protruding stitch, what we're gonna do is make a front post double crochet. So how do we do that? We wrap the yarn around our hook like we normally would for a double crochet, but we're not gonna go under this stitch. Instead, we're gonna look at this post from the double crochet and we're gonna put our hook behind it and then back out. So the post of the stitch is laying on the front of my crochet hook. And this is gonna make this protrude because I'm gonna work the double crochet behind it. So it's gonna be bulky behind it. So now I'm gonna yarn over, pull my hook through, yarn over, pull through two, like I would normally do, yarn over, pull through two. And because I worked behind that stitch, it makes it stick out. Okay, I'm gonna do that one more time because I want another one that sticks out. I'm gonna go behind my post, do the double crochet. There we go. So now I have two protruding. I'm on the back of my work. My tail is on the right. Now, I don't want this one to protrude on the back, so I'm just gonna do a regular double crochet under both loops of the stitch up top. I'll just do a regular double crochet. And that's my repeat all the way across. I'm gonna do two front post double crochets, just like this. Okay. And then a regular double crochet. 
All right, so keep doing that across. So I just broke the bad news to my husband that I really love these furls hooks. <laughs> And the reason it's bad news to him is because of what they cost. <laughs> but what are you going to do, right? Tools are important. I always say that in cooking and everything you do. And he understands that he does woodwork. Good tools can really make the difference. Okay. And then a regular here. And two front posts. And then a regular and two front posts. And a regular. Very simple, right? Two more front posts. And we're going to end by putting a double crochet into the top of that first chain three. Which is like a regular. And then we're going to chain three and turn our work. Okay. Now, you see the beginning of our waffle, right? You see the protruding stitches. From this point on, you do not need to know anything. You just look at your fabric and you do what it's telling you to do. What do I mean by that? Well, my chain three counts as my first double crochet. When I go to the next one, I just look. Is it sitting behind or is it protruding? If it's sitting behind, I'm just going to do a regular double crochet into it. Okay, this one also sitting behind. I'm going to do a regular double crochet into it. This one's protruding, so I want to do a front post double crochet because I want to keep it protruding all the way up. Sitting behind, I'm going to do my regular, and this is it. So why is this called a two pattern, a two row repeat? Well, it's very simple. It's because every time you're on the front of the fabric, you'll be doing the same thing. And every time you're on the back of the fabric, you'll be doing the same thing. I'm not paying attention, clearly. <laughs> what am I doing? Okay. There we go. So that's why it's a two row repeat, because there's a front and a back. And you do the same thing each time you're on the front and the same thing each time you're on the back. Now, I really think that the waffle stitch is so pretty, especially for making things like washcloths, dish towels. I really love that country look the waffle stitch gives you. Um, and when I say country look, it's more of like a farmhouse feel is what I'm thinking. I really feel like that waffle dishcloth adds to that. So I'm probably, now that I'm making these, now that I've reminded myself about the waffle stitch, I will probably go back and use some cotton to make some dish towels for myself for the fall. Okay, so when I get to the last Chain three, one, two, three, go into the top of that there. And make a double crochet and chain three and turn. Okay, now we're on the back of the fabric. And again, we don't need to know anything. We just look at our fabric. It'll tell us what to do. Okay, so as we look, these two are protruding and this one's sitting back. Now, how can I tell that? Because sometimes in the beginning, it's a little confusing. It's very easy. Any stitch that's sitting back will have this bar across the front of it. You'll see it. And what is that bar? That's the stitch we worked behind the post when we were doing a front post double crochet on the other side. Okay? 
So these don't have the bar, so they're protruding. So I'm gonna do the front post double crochet in both of those. Okay, this one's sitting back. I'm going to do the regular. And this is literally all you have to do for the waffle stitch. These are great for mindless whips. You can sit in front of your TV, make yourself some washcloths, some dishcloths. I bought the um, cotton from Hobie. If you watched my Hobie unboxing, I got a cotton in this color, which is the color of my kitchen walls. So I'm going to make some cloths in this and maybe then some neutrals like grays or uh, taupes. And I think that'll be really pretty. Okay, where was I? See? I didn't have to memorize, I just went and I looked at my stitches and I said, oh, I know what I have to do. And this is what you do all along. This one's sitting back, so I'm gonna do a regular. How do I know it's sitting back? It had that little cross stitch in front of it. And these two are protruding. And then this one's sitting back. so many things I want to do. I have a friend coming over today and we're going to make some crocheted pumpkins. I was inspired by Misty's pumpkins. If you didn't see those, go to the last show and tell. They were absolutely adorable. So I'm going to try a few different kinds of pumpkins. The weather here, I don't know how it is where you are, is starting to feel fall-like, so it's really getting me in the mood. Okay, I'm in my last chain three. I am going to put a double crochet in the top of the chain three. And then I would just chain three and turn and continue on. And there is your waffle pattern. Nice and easy. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that stitch tutorial. If you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments below or feel free to send me an email and I will get back to you as soon as I can. As always, thank you so much for joining me. I truly appreciate it. Remember to make it your own and I'll see you soon.